In this video, we will talk about how to make your objects thread safe in multi-threaded environment. Now, before even I go ahead and I talk about different techniques of how to make your object thread safe, let's first try to understand this terminology called as thread safe. So, in order to understand this terminology, you can see that I have a simple class here called as the maths class. And this maths class takes two numbers here, num1 and num2. And you can see that there is a very nice divide function here and this divide function actually is nothing but it's a big for running loop here you know it runs like hundred thousand times and what it does is you know it takes random numbers into these num1 and num2 variables so you can see that you know i'm using the dot net random function here and it takes you know random numbers between one one to two in num1 and again it takes random number between one to two in num2 it divides them right and then it initializes you know both these variables num1 and num2 to 0 okay so we have a very very simple divide function here you know which is running like 100,000 times and it takes some random numbers and divides them and afterwards it goes and initializes you know both num1 and num2 to 0 so that the next for loop iteration can go properly right now this divide method of the maths class I want to call in a multi-threaded environment now let's try to understand you know what kind of problem we can face here so what i'll do is uh, in the static void main i'm going to go and uh, create a thread here called as t1 and uh, first let's go ahead and create the object okay so let's go ahead and create the maths object so maths obj1 obj maths is equal to new maths right and in this thread right you know we're going to go and uh, call the divide function so I'm going to say obj maths obj maths now uh, you know you can see that I'm not able to see the obj maths here why because we have this method as static so we can only call static objects inside static method so I'm going to just make it static so we'll say obj maths dot divide All right and we'll say start this thread so what will happen is it will actually go and start you know running this divide function here the divide method here which will actually run hundred thousand times and take the random numbers and divide them okay and also what I'll do is now this is you know you can think about this is the child thread right this is more of a child thread right now this static void main also you know runs on a separate thread right so I would also like to go and call obj maths dot divide you know from the main thread right so you can see now that obj maths obj maths or divide is called from the child thread so that is one thread which is running on the maths object and in the same way the main thread that is static void main is also calling this divide function so two threads are now calling concurrently the divide function so what kind of problem we can face okay so what I'll do is I'll just go and run this so I'm going to just do a control F5 here let's see what happens so there it goes and you can see that there is an error here now let's see what the error is so I'm going to just go and close this program to just display the error and we can see that the error says that attempted to divide by zero now how did that happen right so let's try to analyze what happened so let's go back again to a program here this happened because our maths object is not thread safe in other words you know if your object is behaving abnormally under multi-threaded environment you know that means you know you have not taken care of you know the multi-threaded environment now said and done that you know let's analyze you know why this error is coming why the error of divide by zero is coming right so as we said previously we have two threads here one is the main thread and the other one is a child thread now it's very much possible you know when both of these threads are calling this divide function you know in a concurrent manner it's possible that you know the main thread is probably dividing executing this line of code and at the same time the child thread is over here setting this to zero so what happens is you know he sets this to zero the main thread comes here and he's trying to divide and you get the exception right so now the next thing is so what is the solution right so the solution is that you know you know at least these lines of code at one time only one thread should execute in other words you know let's say the main thread is going and executing uh, you know he is going and 
uh, what you call getting the random numbers then you know until he comes to this line of code thread 2 should not be able to enter these lines of code in other words at least for you know these lines of code only one thread can enter at one time you know i am to say the multi threading can happen here in the for loop we don't care about it because there are there is no code over there you know which can which can cause abnormal problems right but at least for these lines of code we would like that one thread at a time should be executing it not more than that right so how do we ensure that you know only one thread is executing these lines of code and this kind of abnormal behavior you know we can avoid this can be achieved by using proper thread synchronization thread synchronization techniques i'll say so there are three important thread synchronization techniques currently you know in dotnet one is the lock you can say it's a lock monitor whatever name you want to call the second one is mutex and the last one is semaphore so for now you know for the simple problem you know what should we use right so in order to solve this problem you know we can use something called as a lock or the monitor so what i can do is i can say okay i can say here lock this right so this lock keyword here signifies that you know whatever statements are enclosed inside this what you call lock scope here at a given moment of time only one thread can execute it so now what should happen is if i do a control f5 i should not get that error so you can see that the complete for loop executed and there was no problem again let me just demonstrate this if i go and comment this right and if i again do a control f5 you can see the exception is there if i go and put the lock keyword here so if i go and uncomment this and if i now do a control f5 the error is not there so what happens is you know when you put a lock keyword right or when you use the lock syntax only one thread can execute those lines of code and uh, you know you can have thread safety so i hope that you have enjoyed this video in this video we saw that you know how we can make our objects thread safe by using the lock keyword now you know when we talk about thread safety you know there are three important keywords again you know which uh, which are very important to understand the first one is monitor the second one is mutex and the last one is semaphore so in the next part of the video we'll try to understand what exactly is monitor mutex and semaphore thank you so much